In this video, I try to survive 100 days of hardcore Better Minecraft. Better Minecraft is a mod pack that adds content to the game while staying true to the original. There's new biomes, new dimensions, new structures, and a redone Ender Dragon. So grab your snacks, relax, and see if I can survive. I start my adventure by spawning on a strangely orange tree. Then I noticed a structure in the distance and went up to it and was thoroughly disappointed. Just, just some water, what even is this? I knew that my first goal was to survive the night, so I started by breaking a tree. And fun fact, I find out later that if I press a key while breaking one of the blocks of a tree, the whole thing breaks all at once. Once I finish getting wood, I look at my minimap and see a big red structure. I see a zombie and a few dogs on there too, but I decide to go check out the big red thing. Oh my gosh, what is this? Oh! <laughs> As you can tell, I was interested. That wasn't until I saw walking mushrooms guarding it. But I decided to sneak in anyway. Okay! Oh my! Now that I knew these mushroom dudes were actually after me, I retaliated by stealing their stuff. Notably, actually a fire protection chain chess piece. Then I tried to see if I could kill one with my bare fists, which ended with him cornering me and me running away. But then I actually came across some stones, so I made some basic starting tools like an axe and a pickaxe. With these new tools, I decided to go get my revenge. But that was actually one of the worst mistakes that I made in the entire series. Hey guy. Oh, that's not even a... <gasps> okay, he's not friendly, but maybe. Oh! Oh my gosh, that did all of my health! As I was running away, I realized that I needed to be more careful and get more supplies. And that's when I stumbled across a village. And like anyone would, I borrowed some of their food and looked through some of their chests. And that's when I found two maps. One to an illager hideout and one to a stray fortress. And even though the end goal is to defeat the ender dragon, I decided our first goal was to go and check those two places out. But before I could do that, I finally checked out this quest book that was in my inventory. It gave me a bunch of goodies, one of which being a charm of life, and I'll only find out what that does later. But before long, it was nighttime, so I went in a villager's bed, ending day one. Before we head out into day two, I just realized something, that if we go into our video settings, there's a little thing called shader packs. Oh yeah. That's much better. After I turned on shaders, I started following the map. I just basically ran in one straight line all day. Yo. Oh yeah, I also got distracted by all the cute animals this mod pack adds. Ooh, a reindeer. And if I wasn't looking at animals, I was looking at the shaders. Wow. But as the night was coming to an end, I realized something that was not good. I don't have a, I do not have a bed. And it is nighttime. And because I couldn't find any sheep, I decided to make a boat instead and sail through the night. And it was really pretty. I was thoroughly enjoying it. And then, oh, safety, safety. This safety brought me straight in to day three. Day three was more sailing trying to find this illager outpost. Ooh, it might be next to that village. At the village, I found little copper golems, but I never figured out how to make them work. I looted some of the village chests and even found some friendly warrior villagers. I also found this iron golem named Myriad. After I left the village, I found this sign pointing me in the direction of another one. Y'all, sun is that way. At the second village, what I first thought was a blacksmith turned out to be a fully furnished kitchen complete with its own private chef, which was a dressed up villager. And in the kitchen, I found some rope, which I could climb. In a nearby church, I found, and took, a brewing stand. After that, I found this weird stone structure. I clicked it, and nothing happened, so I moved on to find a place to sleep. And don't worry, tomorrow, I find out what it does. Once tomorrow became today, I left the village, but right outside of it, I found a villager that looks to have been outcast from the rest of its kind. His name was Radcliffe. Radcliffe? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I left the wizard and then came across this lookout tower. Inside there was a chest with fireworks in it. Clutch. 
<coughs> we don't talk about that anyways. I kept traveling, I went past a witch's hut, and then... Oh, <gasps> I'm close. That's right, I was right next to the Illager hideout, and then I found some hot sun lichen. And we're swiftly moving along. I kept going closer to the hideout, and then I got there, and I realized that it was underwater. Ain't no way. Bye-bye. As I kept traveling, I came across a frozen ocean, and there were penguins. Oh my gosh! What's up? But eventually, I left the penguins and rode my boat on the ice until I hit the ocean. Once on the ocean, I found this guy stranded on a boat in the middle of nowhere. So I took his stuff and slept in his boat. <laughs> on day five, I fished. I caught one fish. I don't know why I just did that. Then I came across this weird structure leading underground. When I went closer, there were mobs inside. So I left. Then I found a village right next to a hemlock forest biome. I honestly think this biome kind of just looks like big stupid Christmas trees. In the village, I found a greenhouse ran by a villager lady named Prin. Next to that was another one of those weird stone structures that I found in the previous village. After clicking it, I found out that it was called a waystone and it let me teleport between other waystones. And all I had to do was give it one level of XP. After that, I stole another brewing stand and left the village to look for somewhere to settle down. This, this is where I'm making my house. It's flat and that's it, that's all I need. So, I settled down, with plans to soon investigate that dungeon in the middle of the ocean. Speaking of which, once I finish the dungeon, I'm setting off these fireworks. Oh yeah, I also figure out that I can insta-mine a tree. And lastly, I appreciate the view with shaders all the way into day 6. On day 6, I get the best idea. Wait a second. If all I have to do is press one button and it cuts the whole tree down, does that mean... It didn't work, but then I found a seal. Bro, there's a seal. No way. Oh gosh, water clutch. To potentially upgrade my gear, I decided to take the risk of doing the dungeon now before I have good armor or good weapons. I walk down the dark stairs and get an achievement telling me that I'm inside of a catacomb. I fight off the zombies inside and break the spawner which the zombies were coming from. I opened a chest and inside was a diamond sword. I looked around the catacombs and found four more entrances to go deeper into the catacombs, so I blocked them off so nothing could attack me. I decided to go into the fourth staircase to see if anything was down there. On the second layer there were more zombies and more spawners which I took care of. Then I found another staircase to go to a third layer of the dungeon. I went down and regretted it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I did end up going back down to see how tough those skeletons actually were. Oh! Oh my gosh. After that, I decided to call it a day and go back to my house. On day seven, I experimented with different color palettes for my house, and then I went mining. And then I kept mining until I got jump scared by a goblin trader. Oh my gosh. I found out that this little guy is just like a traveling merchant, but for people underground. After that scare, I continued mining all the way into day 8. On day 8, I started placing the house's foundation, put stairs in my mine, got some more resources, and kept working on the house. On day 9, I finished the foundation and started putting flooring down in this cool grid pattern. Then I went and cut down some trees and went mining some more. I eventually found this massive cave below my house, but I realized that I wanted to get better equipment before venturing into that. On day 10, I woke up to a very pretty sight. What a rainbow? Then I got iron armor and went back to explore more of that big cave. In the cave, I found an abandoned house which had random food items in the chest. Then I found some jars, which I broke, and it dropped some rope and torches. Then I found this weird block called lichen moss that glowed if I stepped on it, so I took some. Finally, I mined some more iron and then went back to the surface. On day 11, I finished up the floor and then started building the house up. 
Then I added a gradient to the foundation to spice up the color palette of the house. Then I mined some sand to make windows, and lastly, I lit up the area around my house to make it a little safer. The next day, I kept building up the walls of the house and added the windows that I got yesterday. Then I built the entrance to the house, complete with a very fancy front door. I mean, doesn't that just scream royalty? I spent the rest of the day continuing the walls and lighting up the house. I spent day 13 heading back into the mine to get more resources for the house. I got loads of soapstone, tuff, blackstone, and gravel. While mining, I also found a cave. That got me excited. But there was nothing in it, so then I went home. On day 14, I kept building up the walls and moved my storage inside, labeled and everything. I finished the day by making a patio. I started by making some fences to put around the corners of it. I really like how in this mod pack, the fences connect by curving 45 degrees. Then I put some more fences to act like a door to the patio, and I really thought that was cozy. The next day, I worked on the roof of the main floor of the house and fancied up the already very fancy entrance. I continued on the roof by making this horizontal grid that's supposed to look like ceiling support beams. Once that was finished, I made stairs up to the second floor of my house. On day 16, I admired the house. Then I started working on the second floor, which gave me the idea to make a red roof out of red concrete. So I went out to find flowers to get red dye and also decorate the house. I got a lot of flowers. I started working on the walls of the second layer, but quickly realized I don't have enough blocks. So with the rest of the day, I went mining. And on day 17, I used those newly mined resources to make the walls to the second floor of the house. Day 18, I got the materials to make the red concrete roof, which were just lots of sand and lots of gravel. Then I put these cute trap doors that lead into my mine so I can access the mine from the house. Finally, I made all the concrete that I would ever need, looked at my house in the weird, weird state that it is in, and I'm then I- pause. What? I'm gonna pause the voiceover real quick because Y'all, I am sick and tired of building this house, but I'm about to do the roof, and that's my favorite thing to do. Got all the materials for it, but I'm, I want to not do build. <laughs> I'm going to finish this on another day. So I think today, right now, I actually want, I'm going to sleep, and then we're going to take over the dungeon. Though it was rude to interrupt me like that, I did what I said I would do. I went to bed, and in the morning, I went back into the catacombs. Conquered the catacomb. With the catacombs finished in only two days, I felt like I still had adventure inside of me. So I ran in one direction for the entire day. I also didn't get that great of loot from the catacombs. It was mostly just bones. Yo, hermit crabs. I used to own a hermit crab. Oh, this one doesn't have a shell. It's naked. Here you go. Put the shell on! Oh my gosh. At sunset, I came across what looked to be an abandoned village, but little did I know, it was so much more. I spy a stronghold? <laughs> That's right, on day 21, I found the stronghold, aka the structure that contains the one and only portal to the final boss in the game, the Ender Dragon. The next day, I explored the abandoned village. It was filled with these weird, small, empty rooms, some with beds and some with bookshelves. It definitely told a story of some underground species that lived here years ago. As I ventured down, the rooms started getting bigger, the architecture more elaborate. But then I made one of the worst mistakes of this entire series. I found stairs that led back to the surface, and after going up them, I found a pillager hideout. I killed one with ease, went up to loot their chests, where I found a crossbow and some other goodies. I released the villagers trapped near the hideout, and then I left. Well, I was going to leave, but before I could, I died. Hey, don't be mean. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, did I die? That's what I was going to say, but I accidentally pressed my mute button on accident out of pure 
beer, so I don't have a recording of my reaction, but let's just say my adrenaline was off the rails. Nonetheless, I only ever figured out what happened while looking back on the footage like five minutes ago. So in case you missed it, the Illager hit me three times. The first got me down to two hearts, the second I blocked with my shield, and the third killed me. The way that I'm still alive is because of an item that I got at the very beginning of the playthrough, the Charm of Life. According to the wiki, the Charm of Life prevents death once while in a player's inventory, healing them back to four hearts immediately. So thank you, Charm of Life. And with that being said, let's return to me realizing that my mic was muted. I don't know how long my mic's been muted, but voiceover Ben got this. <laughs> Why, thank you. With the charm of life gone, for some reason that gave me the extra confidence to go deeper into the stronghold. So I dug straight down to see what I would find. I entered into this giant library. At first I thought, oh, this is cool. Then I opened a chest. It had some of the best enchanted books you can find in the entire game. It had Mending and Unbreaking 3. I found another chest, this one having Sharpness 4, Unbreaking 3, Piercing, and Loyalty. For those who don't play Minecraft, that's very good. <laughs> Once I looted the library, I went out the door and found the portal room. There's an end portal right there, but it's guarded. I'll be back. Fun fact, that's code for, I'm gonna go steal all your enchanted books and not come back. So that's what I did. In fact, I got so many books that I had to leave a whole bunch behind because my inventory was full. So I went home to empty it. We have made it home. Oh, to our ugly, ugly house. Once I was home, I got a little distracted and spent a very, very long time, six days, finishing the house. Oh, I also set off the fireworks. Anyway, here's the tour of the house. We have an incredibly fancy entrance, ceiling board roof, trap doors that lead to the mine, and outside a beautiful patio, and me in it. Upstairs we have two huge windows and my bed. Along with that is a door outside to a lookout area on the roof. And that's it. Now that the house is done, I think it's time for another adventure. So on day 30, I wanted to go back to the stronghold, but first I made a backpack so I could hold all that loot. This time to get to the stronghold, I went on a boat to get there faster. But on the way, I found this weird, creepy looking camp thing. When I got closer, I saw an illager that instantly blinded me. So I ran away as fast as possible. He started shooting at me, but I got away before he got a chance to kill me. Once I got to the stronghold, I went into an entrance. The plan was to go in and out of there as fast as possible, but I definitely got lost and ended up spending five days inside of that thing. Though getting lost was scary at first, I got so much loot that I didn't really care. I mean, look what I got on the very first chest that I opened. I got my first diamonds of the playthrough, yes on day 30, and an enchanted golden apple, which is basically 10 seconds of invincibility. I definitely underestimated how big the stronghold was. Even though I had a mini map of the entire thing, I couldn't find the portal room. And every time I thought I was getting close, it revealed another underground room with more chests to loot. Oh, I also found this cool looking villager statue, which actually gave a lot of lore to this place. My guess, based on the chest filled with weapons and armor, is it was a place once dedicated to training villager soldiers to fight the ender dragon. But at some point, they failed and died out. So now it's up to me to avenge their death and kill the Ender Dragon. Anyways, at one point I started hearing a lot of zombies, so I went to go check it out. I broke a block on the ceiling and then just tons of zombies started falling down and trying to kill me. I ran down the stairs and trapped them, but more kept spawning. So I dug around the staircase to see what was happening. I found that within the stronghold, an entire catacombs also spawned with it, causing a ton of zombies just to spawn in the stronghold. The thing is, for some reason the catacomb here was a lot harder. I was trying to break the spawners, but it didn't take long for the zombies to block me in a corner, forcing me to run away. I got my enchanted golden apple out, ready to eat it, but with three hearts left, I thought it would be okay. I fought off the baby zombies, but one hit me, getting me down to two hearts. Around the corner, more zombies just kept coming in, so I towered up and tried fighting them from there. But just more kept coming, so I had to dig up and just leave. 
On day 33, it was back to exploring the stronghold, and believe it or not, look at the first chest I opened. Another enchanted golden apple. Also, look at how the catacombs spawned with the stronghold. It looks so crazy. Crazy. I was crazy once. Guys, I got so many goodies that the backpack that was meant for just enchanted books was filled with armor, diamonds, and so much more. For the rest of the day, I continued just to explore and try to learn the lore of this place while also narrowly avoiding the dangers of it too. It only took until day 34 to finally find the main library with all the enchanted books. But before getting to them, I wanted to check out the portal room again. I killed the skeleton archers, found a room that I did not even want to deal with, and then saw the portal. There were no eyes in it yet, which meant I needed to get 12 eyes of ender to even get a chance to fight the ender dragon. With the rest of the two days, I looted every chest I could find, found some sort of weird old school room, looted some more, and then left back to the house once I had no more room left. Once I got home, I sorted all the books I had, and here they are. It's Mending, Fire Protection, Bane of Arthropods, Unbreaking, Sharpness, and all the other ones. It's basically every enchantment that I could ever hope for. Now all I need is an anvil. On day 36, I decided to go to the nether. For those unaware, the nether is essentially Minecraft's version of hell. The reason you go there is to make eyes of ender, which fill in the portal that we found earlier in the stronghold. So I got some obsidian for the portal and for an enchantment table, which I then made. Along with finally, an anvil. I used all the levels I had to upgrade my gear. Most notably, I made a mending, sharpness four, unbreaking three sword, and a pickaxe with mending and efficiency four. With that gear, I went outside and built the portal to the nether next to my house. I lit it, checked my gear, making sure I had that enchanted golden apple, and then I went in. I spawned in in a new grassy biome that I've never seen before. I was extremely cautious and on edge. I had no idea what enemies could be lurking around the corner. I looked around and saw that a nether fortress had spawned right next to the portal. And the nether fortress is the structure I came here for, because they spawn the blazes, which give us an item to make the eyes of ender. As the day passed, I got blocks, and I was gonna go to the fortress until I saw a structure right below me. When I got closer, I saw a ton of striders and a spawner, which I broke. The chests didn't have anything interesting in them, but there was an anvil which I took. Then I bridged my way over to another structure. It seemed to have the same layout as a jungle temple, but in the nether. And just like the jungle temple, I knew there was going to be a trap. So I was pretty careful about not triggering anything. Until I accidentally did. But it's okay, it was all contained. The chest had a bomb, which I didn't even want to mess with, and a looting three sword, which I thought would come in handy when fighting the blazes. As I left the nether temple, I stopped. I just couldn't believe how pretty hell could be. <laughs> I staircased up to the fortress, saw a weird creature in the lava, and then made my way up to the top. I explored and fought my first wither skeleton, blaze, and ghast, then eventually found a blaze spawner. Day 38 started with farming blazes, with only a few close calls here and there. And I almost accidentally ate my golden apple. But eventually I had 15 blaze rods, so I left to explore more of the nether. After a few minutes, I came what I thought could be a nether boss chamber. So with extreme caution, I approached. I broke inside. There in the middle was a giant statue of the Wither. The Wither is a boss in vanilla Minecraft that in my opinion is much harder than the Ender Dragon. And I thought that this was a boss chamber that was about to spawn one. But instead of leaving, I got closer and started looting the chests inside. And oh my gosh, I got so many diamonds. In the end, it was just a place that looked cool and spawned some wither skeletons. Maybe it was a temple dedicated to worshipping the wither, but thankfully not a place that summoned one. In this temple though, there was a staircase. I went down it, but it just kept going down until I entered another mineshaft. This mineshaft went on and on. It had chests to loot, but the loot was nothing special. As I continued wandering, I found a hallway and we were back to chests with diamonds in it. On day 39, I continued wandering through the hallways. There were iron ingots and stone swords on the walls, leading me to believe that I was in some sort of wither skeleton training camp. But there weren't any wither skeletons spawning, so maybe they all graduated. As I continued, I turned a corner and saw a trap chest. Behind the chest, I found explosions, so I broke them. I looked for any other traps and couldn't find any, so I opened the chest and... nothing happened. 
<laughs> so with the trap broken, I got two diamonds from the chest. I continued through the barracks, and the most interesting thing that happened the rest of the time was I noticed the walls kind of looked like the wither. Oh, I also freed and traded with a piglin, but then I left the barracks, then the fortress, and then I went back home. On day 40, I sorted through the loot and found that we now have a total of 28 diamonds. And with those, I made diamond armor. I put mending on each one, which is an enchantment that restores durability when you gain XP. But then I realized that without more XP, I can't make better armor than the armor that I have on now. So I only upgraded my boots and left the rest for later. Then I went outside to get flowers. What could I be up to? There's no possible way that I'm collecting flowers to put around a circle of water and then throw a diamond in it making a portal to another dimension. And there's no way that I learned I could do that by reading it in my quest book. To create a twilight forest portal, first make a 2x2 two two infinite water source and place flowers on the surrounding grass blocks and throw a diamond into the water. Okay, maybe that's exactly what I did, but... Just so you know, I've never explored the Twilight Forest in my life, so I had no idea what to expect. After I went in, my first impression is it felt nostalgic, and it was almost dark, like it was Twilight. Anyways, I opened up the quest book and it told me the first thing I should do is kill a boss called the Naga. So I followed my map to see what the boss looked like, and eventually came across this big structure. I went up it and it kind of looked like some sort of hedge maze. The Naga health bar showed up and I got scared so I left to see more of the dimension. I found another structure underground and when I walked in I got blinded and then a goblin guy started chasing me. I killed him and he dropped a book with lore about the dark forest, aka the forest that just blinded me. This dimension freaked me out so I just left, but when I left it spawned me near the village which was odd. And then I went home. On day 41, I started a wheat farm right outside the house. Then I made some fences for an animal farm. And that took the entire day. On day 42, I had my closest call with death yet. And it was by cutting down a tree. I wanted to cut down a giant tree for more wood, but I forgot my axe had vein miner on it, which meant it would cut the entire thing down if the tree was less than 100 blocks tall. So I went up to it and started cutting. But as I cut, the tree got smaller, thus closer to that 100 blocks left. So eventually it cut the entire thing down, but I was near the top. Watch this. I think that may have been my best water clutch I've ever done. And I also can't imagine if that's how I died. That would have been so stupid if that's how the series ended. Then, probably because of my adrenaline, I decided to get revenge on someone who intimidated me earlier in the series. That illager that blinded me. So I got onto a scary base place, shot him, and he just died. <laughs> After that, I got some chickens and put them in my animal pens. And then some cows in the other one. On day 43, I went back to the Twilight Forest to check out the boss again, but... This time I had arrows to kill it. When I went up to it, I kid you not, it had less than half health, and I knew that I had to act on it now in case it could regenerate health. This time, when I got closer, I finally saw the Naga boss. It looked like a giant snake trapped inside of this hedge maze. So I shot it, ran away, shot it, ran away, and I did that for over 20 minutes, all the way into day 44. But it was regening health faster than I was damaging it, and with my arrows running low, I knew it was time to charge in and kill it with my sword. Once it was finally dead, I got a Naga trophy hat and its scales to make some armor. I went through the portal, but this time it spawned me underground. Once I was home, I made myself a Naga chess piece out of its scales. Then I made a power 4 infinity bow, got 25 levels of XP from the quest book for killing the Naga, and saw my next target was something called the Twilight Lich, found in forests. And with the extra levels, I upgraded my diamond pants to have protection 4 and mending. After that, I went back into the Twilight Forest to find the Twilight Witch, which I eventually found on day 45. When I went inside, it was a desert room? Then there were zombies in this floating book which cast spells to attack me. Once I killed them, I was in the main building. It had a big staircase and I thought that most likely led to the boss room. So I went up, broke some spawners, accidentally fell down through a hole in the stairs, then went further back up until I saw the Twilight Lich. 
I stepped into the boss room and it shot me, right in the face. But I knew the fight was on. I started hitting it, but I couldn't tell if I was doing damage against its shields. Then it spawned a duplicate of itself, and then a third one. I was losing hope and had no idea how to damage it. I mean, even my bow would just bounce off of its shield. Suddenly, they all surrounded me and almost killed me. I ran away and thankfully they didn't follow me down. Once my health was higher, I went back up, but that's when one of their own explosions took out a huge chunk of its own health. And now I knew the monster could bleed. On day 46, I stood close while blocking so its explosions would damage itself. And it was working. After its health drained, a second health bar at 100% showed up, and now I could hit it. It summoned zombies to try to kill me, but they were no match for my sword, nor the lich's explosions, and eventually I took down the twilight lich. Its loot was far less interesting than the fight, but at least I got a new trophy hat. The quest book gave me a thing called an ore magnet, but it didn't seem to do anything. It also told me that my next quest is to kill a minotaur. Satisfied, I went home, but then I noticed I had something called a soul star, and when I threw it, it acted like an eye of ender, leading me somewhere. I looked closer and I found it was from a mod pack called Bosses of Mass Destruction. So I thought, what's the worst that could happen? So I slept and the next day I followed it. And off I went, past the village, through the ice biome where I hit some penguins on accident, and then I saw this huge tower in the distance. I threw my soul star and it went towards it. So I went to a different angle and it still went towards it. I knew that whatever was in this tower, it was part of the mod Bosses of Mass Destruction. So of course I approached it very cautiously. It was full of water, almost like something had melted and drained from the top. Inside there was a skeleton along with a skeleton spawner in which I broke. I went a floor higher and there was just a chest with nothing special in it. I went to the top floor and it was empty. Disappointed, I went back to the bottom and there was another layer underneath, but once again, it was just a chest with nothing important. So with an empty tower, I left, but I still wanted adventure, so I kept looking for one. Eventually, a whole castle just appeared in front of me, and I knew I had a fight ahead of me. Once I got closer, I saw a bunch of ice pillagers guarding this castle, and I wanted to see what they were protecting. Once I stepped foot on the castle's property, I got an achievement telling me that this was a Frostologer's castle. I kept fighting the pillagers until I got stuck in some packed snow. I tried breaking the block, but the pillagers just kept shooting me. I was about to eat the enchanted golden apple, but then I escaped and ran away as fast as possible. I dug down to avoid getting shot and ended up killing the pillagers from there. After I escaped, I finally got into the Frostologer's castle, which looked flooded just like the other tower. I went up the stairs or swam up them, and at the top I saw the boss. I may have completely cheesed the boss, or it was just really easy. Here's the uncut footage so you can decide. After he was dead, I broke the diamond block in the middle, looked in the chest, but they didn't have any good loot. After that, I went home, put my diamond block in the chest, watched the sunset, and went right into the next day. On day 49, I repaired my bow and put punch on it, and then put sweeping edge on my sword. Then I went back to the twilight forest, and then I accidentally stepped back into the overworld, and then I went to the twilight forest for real. This time, I decided to head into the dark forest. I came across weird goblin bears, crabs, and this cool transparent wolf, until finally I found the entrance to the dungeon. I didn't know how to get in until I saw this pedestal next to the entrance. I thought of putting the trophy that I got from the last boss on it, and that actually opened it. I dropped in and was greeted by a paladin looking guy, but when I killed him, I found that it was like two mobs stacked on top of each other. So into the dungeon I went. I broke some spawners, looted some chests. The armor inside the chest was actually really good, and I think equivalent to netherite, but the durability on them was trash. It was like gold netherite. I found a training site, took an anvil. Then I came across a bunch of ore above lava. I put water over the lava in case I fell in and then mined it, and I actually found six diamonds inside. I kept exploring the dungeon and found so many crabs, but also found some more loot to loot. Then I found some more mobs, one a weird slime spider bug and one a miner goblin. Then I opened a chest, 
That blew me up. And that marked the halfway point, a trap chest. So welcome to day 50. On day 50, I kept exploring the dungeon, but I would not fall for its tricks again. I kept exploring, killing anything that would kill me, but I knew that there was a boss in here. So I kept searching until I found it. Then I did. I went in the chamber not knowing what to expect. Suddenly, six phantom knights spawned. They floated around me, taking turns, changing into like a bigger version of themselves and attacking me. So I took each one out one by one, pretty easily actually, and then I killed the last one. Inside the chest, I got another trophy and some pretty good tools and armor, so I replaced my chest plate. Once I left the dungeon, I grabbed back my Lich Trophy, and on day 51, I went to see what was in the center of the Dark Forest. After a really dangerous and long trip through the forest, I made it to the center. There was this huge tower that went further than my render distance. I couldn't find an entrance, so I broke a way in. Once inside, there was actually nothing happening on the first two layers, so I thought I might have glitched the tower by breaking in instead of doing the requirements the tower needed. But I didn't know those requirements, so I left. Through the forest, in the portal, and back home to sleep. On day 52, I bred the chickens and the cows, and then went back into the twilight forest. Since I couldn't get into the center tower, I looked on my map and thought I had to kill all four phantom knights surrounding the center tower to be able to get in. So over the next few days, I went to all the dungeons. So I approached the first one, put my trophy in, and went in. I explored trying to find the boss chamber until eventually on day 53, I did. I was a little too confident going into this one and actually got down to two hearts. But eventually, I got back up and killed him. I left that dungeon and ran to the third one. And on day 54, I went in and found the next boss chamber. I killed the third boss, got the loot, left, and went to the next. Rinse and repeat. Except it took me all day to find this one. So on day 55, I killed the final boss and went back to the middle tower, but it was still closed. I tried putting the trophies on the building, but nothing happened. I had no idea how to get in. So I decided to go up to a door and punch it. And then it just opened. This made me feel a little dumb because I bet I could have done this from the very beginning and there was no reason for me to kill all four ghost phantoms. But hey, on day 56, I started going up the tower. Near the first floor was a blaze guardian, which is a blaze with a shield around it. I got scared so I left the room and just avoided fighting it altogether. Once out of there, I could actually see how high the tower was and... It's very high. I also saw this Carmenite golem that acted like an iron golem. Then I looted some chests. All the chests had food items called Experiment 115, which acted like cake, but didn't quite taste right. Anyhow, I eventually found another chest with a tower key in it. I kept exploring and found this creepy mini ghast and a creepy big ghast. Both of them ended up dead. Eventually, I just got bored and broke into the center building, and it was this giant dark building with spawners, which spawned those small creepy ghasts. Then I found another blaze guardian, and this one I actually killed. Eventually, I found this fenced off area. I tried breaking into it, but the blocks like respawned. I went around and found it was caused by this block called an anti-builder. So that was pretty cool. On day 57, I killed another blaze and broke its spawner. Then I found a door to the top of the building, and I knew that this is where the boss of this tower was going to be. To get in, I needed four temple keys, but I only had three, so I went looking for another. On the way, I almost died from a carbonite golem, like watch this. But then I found the fourth key. I put it in the door and entered the final building. There was a maze in there with chests to loot, another anti-builder section, a mob that grabbed onto me, another creepy gas spawning room, and then the stairs to the final boss. Near the stairs were these contraptions called Carmenite reactors, and then these two crafting recipes. The first one crafted Carmenite, and the second one made the vanishing blocks that have been the doors to this whole tower. Next, I decided to turn on the carbonite reactor just to see what would happen. It turned into full diamond blocks, but I couldn't break them. But then it started breaking the blocks around it and exploded. It was a trap, and once again, I fell for it. After I moved on from that, I saw the spawner for whatever boss is at the top of this tower. When I got closer, a huge gas spawned, and at the top of my screen, I could see it was called the Yurgast. I started shooting at it and it started raining its main attack, which is just a bunch of gas tears that explode when it hits the ground. I also noticed on the sides there are a bunch of mini versions of these Yurgasts, aka those creepy small gas that I've been killing on the way up. They were spawning all around me so I killed those too. I decided to go closer to where those mini gas were spawning and I found this weird redstone contraption that was beeping at me. I stepped on the pressure plate connected to it and it stopped. 
I knew it had something to do with the boss fight, but I just didn't know what it did yet. I kept shooting the Yurgast and its smaller counterparts while also turning off these beeping blocks when they started beeping. Eventually, I found out two things. When I activated those beeping blocks, they killed all the mini gas around it, but if I didn't make it in time and it was still beeping, the main Yurgast would actually heal health from the mini ones. But not long after, I took down the Yurgast. The loot contained another trophy hat, Carmenite, and Fiery Tears. Or Fiery Tears? I don't know. Which can all be used to make an armor equivalent, or a little better, the Netherite. Bro, look at just how creepy this gas trophy is. What? What is this? To get home, I decided to ender pearl off the tower. Took a long time. And then I ran home on top of the dark forest. Once home, I took a much needed sleep, ending day 58. On day 59, I made a game plan for what to do before the Ender Dragon. First, I needed better food. I cannot keep munching on bread when I'm about to die. Next is to get better armor. I mean, I don't even have full diamond yet. So first, I looked for food and found that squid ink pasta looks pretty good. But I'll need some tomatoes, which I don't have yet. Next, I went through my quest book just to see more info about the mod pack. Then I made a new backpack, which had a ton more space. After I made an on crafting table, which could on craft items I had at the cost of experience, I looked up how to get tomatoes and it seemed they just spawned randomly or at villages, so I went to the nearby village to see if I could find any. On day 60, I looked in the greenhouse, but no luck. Then I teleported to another village using the waystone, remember that? That village had cabbage and onions in one chest, and when I turned the corner I found tomatoes. I was pretty curious about what other plants could be hiding in the other villages, so I traveled to the next closest one. At that village I actually found another waystone, so I activated it. I also found this weird block that spews green stuff everywhere. Bruh, I feel like this is how COVID started. <laughs> Anyways, that village did not have any new plants, so I left to the next. On the way, I came across this fun colored island with brown, blue, and pink sand, so I took a stack of each and then went back to traveling. The night fell, but I kept walking and eventually got to the village. I activated their waystone and then found a bed to sleep in. On day 61, I looked through that village and they didn't have any new veggies for me. Just this weird hedgestone looking structure. So I killed their cows and traveled to another village. On the way, I found a jungle which had some cocoa beans, some watermelon, and then some wild ginger. When I finally got to a village that I saw on my minimap, I realized that it was the first village that I found in this series. For you guys, it's been less than an hour, but for me, it's been two in real life weeks where I've recorded over 20 hours of footage. So it was kind of cool to see the first bed that I slept in and how far I've come. And I honestly do not know how I haven't died yet. So if you're enjoying the video so far, please give this video a like and a comment. And it's free and I would love to make more of these types of videos. Also, if you want to clip any of this video, think some of it's funny, go ahead, post it on Instagram, TikTok, anywhere. All I ask is for you to put credits on the video, not like in the comments or something. Thank you so much. Anyways, back to the video. I was getting a little bored traveling, so I went back to the village and slept. On day 62, I used the waystone to travel home. Then I broke the village's waystone and put it at my house instead. Now I could travel to any other village with an activated waystone from my house. Then I went below my staircase and started working on an enchantment room. After that, since I got all these new plants, I decided to start farming. This is too slow. This is much better. At the end of the day, I accidentally broke the twilight portal and then went to bed. On day 63, I started farming. Starting with cabbage, then eggplant, then watermelon, then beetroot, then potato, then tomato, and suddenly it was nighttime. So I lit up the farm by putting lights under the plant's water and went to bed. On day 64, I made a kitchen to be able to cook all this food that I'm farming. I mean, look at how cozy it is. I even put an infinite water source in it since some food recipes call for a water bucket. I started working on the squid ink pasta and then added sweet berry bushes to my farm. The next day I got tomatoes, bred my cows and chickens, added carrots to the farms, and finally filled the third pen with pigs. I added grass to the front of the house so it's not this gross gray stone. Then I realized the leaves were changing color and found out that it was officially fall. But besides that I went fish hunting and then finally had everything I needed to finally make squid ink. Oh wait, I need bowls, I need bowls. One second. Okay, now I have everything that I need to make squid ink pasta. I never ate any, instead I just put it in my backpack in case of emergency. On day 66, I looked in my quest book and read about a place called the Bumble Zone, a bee dimension that you get to by throwing an ender pearl at a beehive. It also talked about using honey bottles to trade with someone called the Queen Bee, so I made some bottles, found a beehive, and threw a pearl in. 
Once I was in, the quest book gave me a honey compass, which gave me the location of the queen bee. I looked around and it kind of just looked like I was inside a beehive. A really, really dark beehive. I could break the walls of it and nothing happened. I found these crystals, which I broke, and nothing happened. I explored the hive some more, which was actually pretty big. Then I made the mistake of breaking honey blocks. Apparently doing so aggroes hundreds of bees that are inside the hive and set them all to my location to kill me. I ran down the hive and blocked myself in a hole to get away. I found that it seemed to be a potion effect called the Wrath of the Hive. That lasted about a minute and a half. Once the effect was gone, I climbed climbed out and the bees and I were chill again. I left the cave and saw the sides of the beehive, which kind of reminded me of like a cell wall, the type I learned in school, but yellow. I followed the compass for a while and eventually came across a hanging garden, which was a pretty cool place full of flowers and this cool trippy block. I broke one, half expecting bees to come and kill me, but after none did, I kept breaking them. I even got a few with my silk touch axe so I could bring a few home. The next day, on top of the hanging garden, I found this yellow flower. It looked like it could enchant books using XP, but I didn't have any books, so I took it home to test it out later. After that, I continued to follow the compass until I came across this weird music bee structure. It had note blocks, a jukebox, and a dance floor. I knew that in real life, bees talk to each other by dancing, so maybe this is where they go to learn how? Either way, I just took the music stuff and left. Let me just pause and say that the Bumble Zone mod was my least favorite part about this mod pack. It was dark and the blocks on the ground made you run slower. Like sometimes really slow, which you'll see in a second. The terrain was impossible to get through without a ton of building blocks. And if I wanted to harvest blocks inside of the biome, look at how slow it was. At the end of the day, I came across my least favorite block in the game called a pile of pollen. When I first discovered it, the quest book gave me honey peanut soup, but that was the only good thing about it. All it does is duplicate flowers, but in this dimension, there's a whole biome where the whole floor is just pollen and it slows you down so much. I was having an okay time in this biome, like a 5 out of 10, but after trudging through this for way too long, I was ready to leave. But then the compass started moving in a way that I knew the queen bee was close. So the next day I made honey bottles and the compass said I was finally next to it. I dug down to the queen bee base and I had no idea that I was about to go to half a heart for the first time in this series. In hindsight, I should have known that a nest full of bees would be pretty protective of their queen. I only really thought of that after I jumped down. I immediately got the wrath of the bees side effects and there were just so many bees. I tried blocking myself in, but the hive ground was extra sticky and I just kept getting stuck. Eventually, I got far enough away to block myself in and dig down, while also getting down to half a heart from the poison. As I waited for the bee's wrath to wear off, day 69 came around. Nice. In the meantime, I looked up how to get rid of the wrath of the bees, and the wiki said by feeding a bee spawner or bees a bottle of honey. When I read that, I was never more glad that I made these honey bottles to originally trade with the queen bee. But now, they're gonna save my life. I stood outside the queen bee's chamber to possibly get a bee to fly near me, but after a while, they weren't coming anywhere near me, so I tried to get closer, but once again, I got the wrath of the bees, so I had to wait another minute and a half. And at this point, I was just hating this dimension. It was so annoying. But eventually, I went out another way to see if I could get a bee on the outside. I found one and fed it, and nothing happened. I didn't know if it was a glitch or not, but now I was out of honey bottles. So I had to break another honey block, which would give me another 90 seconds of bees' wrath. But at least this time, I hid from them underwater. I made some more honey bottles and then fed a bee spawner which gave me the protection from the bees. But it was only for 90 seconds. I went in the queen bee structure and it looked really weird. I thought I found her but it was just something called a behemoth. But then I found an armor stand with bee armor on it. I broke it and ran out of there with only 15 seconds to spare. I got another protection effect and went back in. I searched around but I couldn't really do anything with the 90 seconds it gave me. And since I already hated this place so much, I just decided to leave. To leave, I had to dig down to Y0 and jump into the void and it was actually pretty scary jumping into the void because i just had to hope it wouldn't kill me to send me home thankfully it didn't on day 70 i set up the bee armor next to my bed little music station on the patio and then set up this flower thing that enchants books once i gave it some xp and gave it a book i found out that i could enchant it with any enchantment that i wanted to for not that much xp this one block made the bee dimension almost worth it not quite though but it did let me put efficiency 5 on this book for only 6 levels of XP, which is just crazy low. Then I bred the animals and did some farming to end the day. 
on day 71, I looked around my quest book to learn more about the mod pack, I farmed some more, and then I made a grindstone and smithing table. On day 72, I upgraded my armor, and I felt like, even though it wasn't perfect, it was good enough to go back to the nether and explore more. Once I was there, I explored new biomes, got jump scared by sugarcane that blows up, which is just... It was just such a stupid... I hate it. I hated it. I found new structures, even though they were literally just ruins. Eventually, I went back to the fortress to see if I missed anything. And boy, howdy, I did. Near the fortress was a desert temple that was made of nether blocks. Inside was a trap chest, which I opened without realizing it was a trap chest. Wow, that is a big explosion. Oh my gosh. Right outside the temple, I found this chest with a map inside. On day 73, I followed the map and it sent me to a bastion. In vanilla Minecraft, I tend to avoid bastions because there's a mob called a piglin brute. They have axes which disable your shield and they do so much damage. And these piglins have 25 hearts, which in comparison, a zombie has 10. So I snuck onto this modded bastion to see what it had in store. First, I found a bunch of gold blocks and then a blaze spawner. I broke the spawner and grabbed the loot, but I heard mobs below me. I dug down and there were more mobs and another chest. In this chest, there was some good loot and a netherite ingot. On day 74, I knew I had to keep going down, so I went to the bottom of the dungeon. Once I finished that one, I found another one near it and went to the bottom of that too. On day 75, I mined two ancient debris, then hit the end of the second dungeon. So off I went to a third. I killed all the mobs, looted all the chests, getting another netherite ingot, but at the bottom of this one, the bastion actually opened up a lot. On day 76, I came across what looked like a boss room, so of course I went in. In the middle, there was something that looked like a spawner, so I broke into it and this big hand spawned. I walked around it and its eye freaked me out, so I started hitting it. Looking back, I really liked how easy this boss was to understand. There were great audio and visual cues to let me know what it was about to do, which really helped doing it on the first try on hardcore mode. It had three main attacks. It would shoot me with a laser, make a fist and fly at me, or make a fist turn red and fly at me with a big explosion and a bunch of fire at the end. I found that I could only hit its eye when it was open and did no damage to its fist or any other part of the body. Every so often it would give me slowness and blindness but still attack me at the same rate so that was actually really scary. I kept fighting the boss while narrowly avoiding its attacks until I finally defeated it. It floated into the sky and exploded into its loot. I got four inch of debris and a blazing eye, which is used to make an item that lets you fly like you're in creative mode in a seven by seven square. My quest book also gave me a void totem, which my guess will let me live if I fall into the void. After that, I finally went home. On day 77, I sorted through my loot and upgraded my armor. I finally had full netherite. Also, look at how weird it looks with just the Yurgash trophy on and nothing else. But yippee, full netherite. Yippee! Okay, good night. On day 78, I was farming when a traveling merchant visited. I got emeralds and bought grapes from him. I planted them, bred my pigs, and then bought some more types of grapes from the traveling merchant. Then I killed some cows, then got all my sugar cane to redo the farm. On day 79, I dug down in front of my house and started building the sugarcane farm. And next to it, I even put a place for the bamboo. I made some bookshelves for the enchanting room and then went to bed. On day 80, I went outside and... There was another rainbow. I made a waystone and 10 eyes of ender and went off to the stronghold. Once I got to the stronghold, I set the waystone down and dropped in. I broke some bookshelves with my silk touch axe and then went to the portal room and filled 10 of the 12 eyes. I just needed two more to finish the game. After that, I looked around some more of the stronghold but didn't find anything interesting. So I dug out, teleported home, and slept into day 81 where I continued working on the enchanting room. I quickly realized that I was far too cramped in there so I decided to break it and move it further down the staircase. I mined out a huge area and started building and this time I added some glistering honey crystal blocks that we got from the B dimension. I layered it with the shroom light behind it and I thought they looked really good together. I also added the cypress wood that we just harvested to add more earthly tones with the orange. On day I farmed some of the cypress, then looked at a chicken. I made a huge cypress tree and cut it down, and then tried different ways to spice up the enchanting room with fences, water, leaves, and some oak planks. Then the auto tree breaking thing reset some of my progress. Oh my gosh. Then I tried a leaf wall, and I actually liked it a lot. 
The next day, I put a light surrounded by cobblestone bricks behind the leaf wall, which I thought looked good. I switched the water to the middle and added trap doors and fences to add some more depth to the wall. I repeated that same pattern to the other two walls, and after that I worked on the entrance into day 84, where I made the staircase to the enchanting room bigger. I added a light under the stairs, then I added some similar looking blocks to the cobblestone bricks just to add some variety. I ended the day with some farming and animal feeding. On day 85, the enchanting room was done. So here's the tour. It has a beautiful open walkway to the center with an enchantment table that can get up to 30 levels. And I love how this looks with the ground and ceiling being the honey crystals, the leaf wall. It looks inviting but feels sacred and that's exactly the vibe I was going for. Later in the day, I was going through some other food items to make and I found hamburger, which is honestly the best thing on the menu at Burger King. <laughs> So I got the ingredients for it, which were tomato, cabbage, bread, onion, cow, and I made a looting three sword. And then finally, I made my first hamburger. On day 86, I made more hamburger, a total of 42 of them. I remade my twilight forest portal, but since there was a thunderstorm outside, I decided to sleep the day away. On day 87, I went back into the twilight forest to see if I could kill every other boss in there before the ender dragon. I didn't know where to go, so I just got in my boat and went in a direction. Eventually, I came across this huge tree, and I thought it could be a boss, so I went inside, climbed to the top, and there was nothing. I MLG watered out of there, which in hindsight is kind of stupid, because if I missed it, I literally would have died. Then I remembered I had a quest book that told me where the bosses were, so I looked in there and I saw the next one was a minotaur found in the swamp, so off I went. Once I got to the swamp, I accidentally just ran past it and went into something called the Fire Swamp, which contains the boss after the Minotaur. Since I had to kill the Minotaur boss first, it just kept setting me on fire because I wasn't allowed in there yet. I didn't know that on day 88 though, and I just had no idea where to go. So I went to a mushroom island 700 blocks away because I thought maybe that would have like a mushroom themed Minotaur boss, but all there was was this cave. So at this point, I just googled it and I found out that I passed it on the way to the Fire Swamp. So I traveled all the way back. And on day 89, I finally found the labyrinth that contained the Minotaur boss. So I went in and was greeted by Minotaurs, these human cow looking creatures with axes that charged at me. I took them out pretty easily, but they weren't the mob that I was needing to gain access into the fire swamp, so I kept searching for it. This labyrinth was so big that it took me until day 90 to find the drop down to the second layer. And right next to that was actually the boss room, so I approached it and the boss spawned. It was called the Minnow Shroom. I broke in and it was definitely the easiest boss by far. I shot it four times and almost killed it, so I went in to finish it with my sword. Once it was dead, I got its loot, which was another trophy, a food item called Meef Stroganoff, and the other chest didn't have anything interesting, so I left the labyrinth. On day 91, I went to the fire swamp, went inside, but I still burned. I thought that maybe I had to eat the Meef Stroganoff, and it actually worked, because once I did, I got an achievement that said, you could go into the fire swamp now. So I went in and searched for the next boss, which eventually, I found. It was called the Hydra. I charged in and started hitting it, when suddenly it made this loud noise and snapped and bit me. I blocked it with my shield at the last second, which it broke and got me down to half a heart. I ran away seeing if I needed to eat my golden apple, but it didn't seem to be attacking me. So I ate and went back in. This boss had a whole lot of health, but I quickly found a good rhythm, which was to go in, hit it a few times, and once I heard that loud noise, I knew it was about to bite me, so I ran away and blocked with my shield. After a bit of doing that, I actually shot one of its heads and it blew up. I thought I killed one of the heads until it spawned back, but this time a fourth one did too. The boss's attacks got quicker, but I also quickly took out the remainder of its health, killing the Hydra. On day 92, I got the loot, which was Hydra Chomp and more fiery blood, and then the trophy, which actually looked pretty neat on my head, especially with the helmet on top. With nothing left in the fire swamp, I left to the next boss, which was actually found in the ice biome. When I got in there, I was greeted by these big white dogs that breathed ice, along with these yeti creatures. Once I killed them, I found the boss chamber for the Alpha Yeti. On day 93, I started the fight. After I hit the Yeti, it immediately started dancing or throwing a big temper tantrum, which made ice fall from the ceiling. Along with that, it also threw ice at me. While it was doing that, I shot it from afar and I actually got him pretty low and I actually wanted to finish him off with my sword. But when I got close, he picked me up and threw me away. 
After I failed my water bucket clutch, he threw another fit so I just decided to kill him with my bow. The loot I got was another trophy, ice bombs, and alpha yeti fur, which actually made some pretty trash armor. But at least the trophy looked funny, especially with the helmet on. After that, I read that the last boss in the Twilight Forest was the Snow Queen, and it was found in the glaciers, which my guess was this big chunk of ice right outside the Yeti's boss chamber. So I dug into it, kept digging, till I came out the top to see the Snow Queen's tower. This weird looking tower that went way into the sky. I went in this giant structure and immediately killed a snow guardian. I looked around and actually liked how this whole tower looked. The next mob I came across was a stable ice core that threw snowballs at me. I kept going higher until I came across an unstable ice core, which when killed exploded, changing the wall of the tower to glass. I actually used that to break outside of the tower and just build up from there. I broke in near the top of another tower on day 94, but all that was there was a room with a chest. But the chest had a charm of life, aka the thing that saved my life earlier in the video. So I equipped it knowing that it would have my back in case I were to die. So with that, I left and broke into another part of the tower. But just like the last time, it just had a chest in there and nothing else, so I left. But the third one I broke into, I found a room full of ice. And I knew that this was it. This was the boss room for the final boss of the Twilight Forest. I went in and she spawned. She flew around me and she had this ice barrier to block arrows. She kind of reminded me of that Mario enemy that flies around in a cloud. It seemed that I could only hit her when she was low enough on the ground. Or at least that's what I thought until I realized that I could just shoot her, I just had to only aim for her head. So I hit her with my sword when she was low and shot her when she was in the air until actually quite quickly, I took down the final boss. The Snow Queen. Hooray! I got two achievements saying I killed the Snow Queen along with the other bosses in the Twilight Forest. The loot she dropped was a tri bow and her trophy. I went to go test the bow and it seemed to be a normal bow that shot three arrows at once and I think my bow with infinity and power was actually better. So I left the tower by water and off. On day 95, I traveled back to my portal while also killing a few endermen on the way. And I actually got enough ender pearls to finally finish the end portal. Once I got home, I opened my advancements tab and found that there was actually so much more to this mod pack and I will definitely need to do a part 2 of days like 100 to 200. So let me know down below if that's something you want to see. Next I made a thorns and blast protection book, but I actually didn't have enough XP to put it on my chest piece, so I went to bed. On day 96, I traveled back to a cool cave entrance that I saw a few days back and I went in. Or I guess I jumped in. Pretty quickly, I found what I thought to be was a really cool, luscious green biome, but when I got closer, a boss bar appeared and... Wait a second, let me kill the mobs. Okay, a boss appeared called Avoid Blossom. So I went in to kill it. And this was by far my favorite boss fight of the entire series. It was just so well optimized and also like really challenging. First, it had this ground thorn attack that took me a second to figure out how to dodge. Second, if I went to hit it with my sword, it had some sort of melee only thorns on it. So it hit me back, making me have to kill it with my bow. Next, when I hit one of the purple diamonds on its health bar, it would actually spawn these blossoms that healed it like the ender dragon's crystals. So I had to break those before continuing the fight. The void blossom also shot a green blob at me that after a few seconds, blew up the ground. Thankfully, I was never close enough for it actually to blow me up too. Once I broke the blossoms and got it down to its second diamond, this time the blossoms spawned again, but some were in cages. So I had to actually break the blossoms from the top. It also had some new attacks, but soon I got it down to its last diamond of health, and this time all the blossoms spawned in cages. Once I broke the last of the blossoms, I got into a good rhythm and shot down the void blossom. It dropped void thorns, which when combined with other boss drops, gave me some pretty cool loot. But I didn't have any other boss loot, so I left and kept exploring more of the cave. On day 97, I kept going through the cave, but I didn't find anything interesting, except for a few diamonds and the stall music disc. Oh, how I love feather falling. On day 98, I went swimming through some drowned towns and found no good loot, but near sunset, I did find a horse. It took me forever to tame him, but once I did, I rode him home, put some horse armor on him, and then gave him a name. I think I'm gonna call you Bert. Bevo and Bert, the dream team. <laughs> I still have my Snow Queen mascot, oh my gosh. On day 99, I had enough XP to upgrade my chest piece and then accidentally wasted the rest of the day. Here's what happened. 
I found an item in my inventory that said it would reset any boss tower if I got close to it. So I thought of that tower that the Soul Star led me to a few days ago. I rode Bert and then dragged him through the water until I got there. I placed down a waystone so I could get home ASAP after I fought the boss. I climbed up the tower, clicked the item, and... No nothing happened. I mean, I tried everything I could think of, even on like different levels of the tower, but after a few minutes, the night fell, so I just had to give up. I went back to the waystone and realized that I couldn't actually TP back with Bert, so I had to leave him there. So, with the sadness oozing into my soul, I said my last goodbyes to Bert. Bert! Bye. On day 100, I traveled to the stronghold, but the last two eyes of Ender in, and opened the portal. I knew that if I went in, there was no way home unless I killed the dragon or I died. I looked at the portal and knew that this was it. Everything I've done has prepared me for this moment. The house, the farm, the enchanting room. The places I've gone have gotten me through a hundred days. The biomes, the villages, the nether, the dungeons, the bumble zone, the twilight forest. But most importantly, the boss fights have given me the loot to be able to kill the ender dragon. The naga, the lich. Phantom Knights, Yurgast, Isolager, Nether Gauntlet, Minoshroom, the Hydra, Alpha Yeti, the Snow Queen, and finally, the Void Blossom. It was now or never. I jumped into the portal. I spawned pretty far away, so I bridged over to the Maid Island. When I got there, the dragon perched. I tried hitting it, but realized that this was actually a bad idea without any of the crystals gone. In case you don't know, the towers that are around the island actually have crystals on them that heal the dragon. So I started breaking those. One, two, three. With the fourth down, I actually saw this weird shulker structure in the distance, but I didn't have time to explore that, so I continued breaking the crystals. And once they were all gone, I went for the dragon. I shot him until he perched, so I went in with my sword. I did some good damage, and then the dragon was in the air again. Not long after that, he perched, and I knew that this was it. If I was fast enough, this would be the end. So I rushed in for the kill, and this is what happened. I did it. I beat hardcore better Minecraft in 100 days. I got the dragon egg, looked at that weird tower, which I guess we'll have to wait until part two to explore. And then I wanted to celebrate on top of the portal. So I took all of my armor and trinkets off and started to celebrate. But I guess I looked at an enderman while in F5 mode and he started attacking me. I got scared and jumped into the portal, but I didn't care. I, I did it. Once I was home, I was happy. Thank you so much for watching my video, and I hope it made your day a little better.